Good evening everyone. So in this video today, I would like to talk about a different topic. Um, I would like to talk about music again and to share some thoughts and opinions I made about music and its, its functionality in the last months. So actually, as I told you, I'm a musician and now I'm also trying to become a scholar. So having to have a scientific approach to music and look at music as an object for different perspectives. So from a social perspective, from a historical one, obviously from a music theoretical one, but not only. And in future, for the future videos, I would really like to mention certain studies to give you also some um, literature that you can read in the description box um, so that you can maybe develop your own opinion on it. But don't take my words as written in stone or uh, that they come from the Holy Bible. So the only thing that I know is that I know nothing, the more I go deeper into a topic, um, also scientifically speaking. It just opens more and more questions. So my major point of inquiry now is I've noticed by reading different sociological studies about music that here in the Western countries, but not only, we're, we have this strict separation between academic music which is our traditional classical music, but today also jazz music. So that there is sort of a high art and then there is this lower art. And um, also in the past years, in the past decades, I'm talking here also in the 60s or 70s, uh, some studies shows that there was this tendency to have a certain snobbism so that certain uh, genres were preferred also by higher class people um, and that there was sort of a snobbism in it, you know, that everything which was not part of the academic sphere was just poor music or, or um, cheap. And today, other recent studies show, and we can observe that also by talking with people, that actually the, the new ones, the, the new snobs are sometimes the so-called musical omnivores. So we have this culture of musical omnivorism, which uh, in my opinion has strongly to do with all the streaming services that we have like Spotify or um, Apple Music or whatever you use. Um, because also with those algorithms, you get different suggestions of music that you maybe would not find, would not hear. Which, on the other hand, as a <laughs> scholar of music or as a musician, is a really cool thing. Uh, but anyhow, so the new snobs became actually the ones that were um, more listening to many different things, and um, and there is still, you know, this this sort of separation between the academic sphere and 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 this this lower sphere. Uh, or this more, this distinction between academic music is cool and it's high art and pop music is sometimes, you know, some cheap stuff. Um, anyhow, the thing is, if you think about music in general, uh, we have this, in the Western countries, this conception of music. But if you think about it, in other cultures, also especially African cultures, um, there is actually no word for music. There are words for singing and dancing. And if you think about it, and now we go more into a spiritual sphere, um, the two seeds of creativity, if you talk about chakras, are the sacred chakra, which is down here, and the throat chakra. Because while with singing, with speaking, you can manifest things into the world, you can express creativity. 
And down there with the movement of your body, you can also express something. You can also express creativity. So the thing is, we should, in my opinion, if you rate music, we cannot only think about music as a high form of art. We need also to consider the functionality of music, the really trivial aspect of music, the really um, the aspect of music that really goes down to the core of society of human being. And more than often, this is actually the more functional music. So what do you mean with functional music? With functional music, I mean music that's some, that fulfills a certain function. The easiest example to make here are the so-called work songs. And we have different plenty of work songs all over the world. And those songs were generated by people, invented by people to accompany certain movements. So, for example, if you take the shanties or the songs of the sailors and, um, and of the, on the, and of the uh, people on sea, they use those songs to pull the ropes on the ship and also to move the capstan. So they used music and songs to make the, lever, uh, the labor less stressful, but also to coordinate complicated, uh, complicated movements because actually they were working with different people together pulling on the rope. So you need to have order and, um, and that everything is perfectly rhythmical so that you can get uh, the work uh, easy done. Um, if you go deeper into, into the, into the issue, um, I mean, about talking about the functionality of music, uh, we think that our society is that sophisticated, but if you look how people behave and what you do, what they do, um, there are still some trivial, really trivial and ancient aspects in it especially with dance. Um, why do people actually love EDM or electronic music? Why do people love minimal music or Goa, where there is just this perpetual beat going on that pushes and pushes and goes continually? There may be no chord changes, there's no harmony, there's just sounds and effects. Why do people actually visit those manifestations or uh, these uh, events or these uh, situations. Why do they enjoy it so much? And I suppose that this music can put you in a sort of a trance and can put you in sort of a state where you can live sort of a catharsis. It's like we live our whole week where we work, we have different responsibilities and in that moment, we have the possibility with music and with movement to express ourselves. So dancing is a very important form of expression for humankind. It is a way also to purge your inner emotions, your heart. Maybe you feel hurt or maybe you feel sad, but also if you feel good, it doesn't matter. It gives a certain movement to your life. You're able to purge something. It uh, brings you to sort of a catharsis. So if we look at that music from that aspect, from its very functional aspect, why do certain people consider this music bad? Why should be a Mozart better than such kind of music? if this very music fulfills a very important function. And this is my major critique that I have on always trying to rate music in certain things. Of course we do, of course we analyze a partiture, of course we can say that it's more appropriate to harmonize one thing in a certain way in another way, or to treat music material uh, in a certain way. But it's not only about that. I think that we need also scholars to very look at also the functional aspect and to an anthropological aspect of music, which is very deep and it's very important. 
I mean, we all are united by the beat of the drum. So hear me out. Another thing that we need, or another consideration that I have, and you can share it or not. But if you look at it, music or also genres develop in different stages. And I conceptualized it as three different stages. It's not something that it goes, you know, it's like music history. It's not that, that everything before was Baroque and then happened this and then happened that. It's very fluent. So the borders are not always very clear. It's a really, um, music fluctuates and uh, the, the development of music fluctuates all the time. It mutates in a really complex way. But in my opinion, music always starts from the motion, from the dancing. If you look at our um, our music, also classical music has its roots. Many composers were inspired also by folklore or, or folk music. And our folk music has no complicated uh, harmonic structure. They're pretty easy songs. And guess what? People dance to it. They go crazy. They get drunk. They dance to it. They have this catharsis, um, this way of expression with dance and music. So... Uh, music starts with this very, very, very earthy way to express itself. So with movement and dance. Um, also, the beginnings of jazz music were like that. People were dancing to this music. People were having fun to this music. There was no specific, um, sometimes specific subject. And then as a second stage, if we continue, so we had the dance as a first stage. And the movement. The second stage is the heart sphere. And in the heart sphere, it is about expressing stories. So we use music as a tool to express our inner emotions, to express what we feel in our heart, in our soul. Sadness, happiness, sad stories, happy stories, dramatic stories. It's about love, it's about death, it's about existence, human existence and its challenges. And we can see that also always with the example of jazz music in many great ballads, ballads that were written. In the, in the very great songs that uh, jazz music, musicians took also from the mu uh, musicals or that were written by great songwriters. So there is this very dimension also of the heart. Then as a third sphere at a certain point, we have more this intellectual sphere, which is more the head space, uh, which is more mu treating also music as an information, as data. And not only, it's also pushing the boundaries and looking for new ways of expression. So uh, this is where it goes a little bit abstract. I don't want, again, to put all these categories like really something completely separate. They go one in another and it mutates continuously. It's a very complex thing, but I've noticed this for many genres of music, this development, that it really starts with this earthly thing, with movement, with catharsis, with dancing, with expression, sexuality. Then that it moves to a heart space where it's about emotions and then it moves to a to a headspace where it is about thoughts, where it is about uh, ideas. So actually a very it is a very fluctuating development. If you want to hear another example, we can also take hip hop music. If you think how it started, uh, the people um, they met they met together, they were dancing to this music. We had someone who maybe was drawing a graffiti or, or making art on, on, on the walls. Uh, we had people singing, we had an MC or somebody who was telling a story. Um, then later, uh, hip hop maybe became also something about telling stories and, 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 and struggles of the people and then in the third sphere if you look at guys like Kendrick Lamar but not only 
uh, how hip hop actually developed into something that's really experimental and and intellectual too. So there is a certain development in it, and it it has a certain functionality. So talking about the other thing before about rating music, and this is a point where I had to be really critical with myself too. In the past, I was very intolerant with the tastes and choices of other people. So honestly, if we have a radio song that we would consider cheap, it could be, for example, now I make a very clear example of a song that I really didn't appreciate, uh, which was Wrecking Ball by Miley Cyrus. It was just a song that I couldn't stand. But I've met people who were very touched by this song, that the song had the meaning for them, uh, that the song gave them a possibility to live a certain catharsis. So why should this song actually be bad if it fulfills a certain function? Just only because it doesn't uh, express itself in complicated or sophisticated parameters like academic music. And this is where also we as musicians and scholars need to go down from the high horse and be humble too and understand that we need also to consider different and other parameters in evaluating music. But again, this is my only personal opinion. But the functional aspect of music, this very ancient aspect, this very deep aspect, this very earthly aspect, is very present. It's still very present and it's still very important. But we have forgotten as a society our ancient roots, our really um, the, the very trivial aspect of thing, the things that we are doing. And I think if we are able to recognize them again, we could use them also as a tool uh, for development. Again, also for catharsis. This is also the very root of music therapy. If you think about the Tarantismo or, or people dancing to Tarantella, not only to other rituals. If you think about the practices of Sufi Islam to reach a higher state of consciousness and trance by movement and dancing and music. This is something also, in my opinion, very sacred. So I think if we judge about music, we should really try to get out of the box and not only evaluate everything from the academic sphere or what we consider to be academic. Because music is not only expresses itself as art, but it can have a very important function, which is outside of being a piece of art. But again, this is just my opinion. I think I got nothing else to say right now. This was my reflection um, that I had in the last couple of weeks and months that I would like, wanted to share with you. And in future, I will try really to give you some um, stuff to read too. So that I put on my video and then also some studies or mention some things that you can read so that you can create your own opinion about it. Anyways, thank you very much for your attention and hope you're doing fine in this very hard time right now, that everything is healthy and safe of your friends and relatives, and I wish you the best. Hope to see you soon. Take care.